Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Beyond the Saga, where we explore all of those extra stories outside of the Skywalker Saga, mainly in the comics, the books, and the games. I am David Cottingham, along with Hannah Burr. How are you, Hannah? I am well, and how are you? Doing great. On this episode of Beyond the Saga, we are going to go back to the storyline of the Star Wars comic series, the original one that started after this first Disney buyout um, starting in 2015. We are moving on to what happens in between around issue 31. I think it's 30, 31, a crossover with the Dr. Afra series, which is what we haven't got into yet, Hannah. So um, now we did the we did the Vader series, which introduced Dr. Afra. So we already know that character or whatever. But um, this is an interesting story that uh, that we're going to talk about, and it's called Screaming Citadel. Um, now this comprises of. Screaming Citadel, number one, and then Star Wars, issues 31 and 32, and then Dr. Afra issues seven and eight. So it's a five-issue uh, graphic novel here that takes place in between volumes five and six of the Star Wars series. So um, it's a complete side thing. It, you know, Honestly, if you completely miss this, book you wouldn't really miss anything i don't think um but uh but it's it's interesting um citadel and the afra books were written by or were written at the time by kieran uh, gillen and then star wars is still this part at this point is still uh, jason aaron so they combined their issues and and did this uh the this book came out october 24 2017 so it, it's 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 fair. It's been out there for a while. Um, anyway, that's all I'll say about it so far, because I want Hannah's take. Hannah, this is uh, a little bit different than what we've been reading, I think, in anything else. Well, Let's hear your thoughts on it. Um, I really want to know who came up with this idea, because <laughs> I want to know like, how they came up with this idea. It's just, it's so out there. It's almost with every single page turn, it was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. What? A excuse me? Okay, and now we're doing this. Like, it just, it, it snowballed into this thing. I don't think anybody would ever imagine Star Wars go, I, I don't think, I don't think anyone would imagine it would go in this direction. Yeah. But it does. <laughs> and I can't really say more than that without, uh, giving away huge spoilers. Uh, but I will say that, uh, darn it, Luke, why are you looking for somebody to train you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is the reason why he gets into this mess. Right. Um, yeah. you know, as, as we've seen Luke through this comic series so far, because again, this takes place right after episode four, you know, he's lost Obi-Wan to Vader's hand and he's struggling to get trained into the ways of the forest, right? So he's been, we've seen him going after artifacts and reading Ben's uh, journal and, and things like that to kind of figure it out, but he's still trying to find that Jedi master that's going to help him. And obviously we know that ultimately he gets, I don't know why it took three years for Obi-Wan to finally say, go to Dagobah and meet up with Yoda, but we know that that's going to happen eventually. Um, I guess the interesting thing about this is the one that gets him into this mess is Dr. Afra, and you know, our, our rebels have come across Afra before. Um, she's kidnapped Luke in the past, you know, in, in the past issues of Vader and, and Star Wars. And, um, you know, this, again, this involves a lot of the characters that we we know at this point right now, Luke, and then of course, Han and Leia. And uh, Sana Staros is still around. And then you got Afra, who obviously comes with uh, Chris Anton, the, the, the black uh, Wookiee. And then you've got uh, Triple Zero and 
BT still, you know, the, the assassin droids are, that play a good part of this. So um, a lot of the familiar characters combining in this crossover and, and, and doing, and doing this thing, but you're right. I, it's, it's hard to talk about too much of it. Um, I will just say that I, it's, it's got a very horror type vibe to it. Right. Um, I mean, this came, it, it's funny cause it came, the issues came out throughout 2017 but this came out in October, which is very Halloween-like, right? Very. Yep. I, I actually was about to ask you, wait, it came out in October, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Halloween. It's funny because we just had Halloween yesterday, so we're in that time, that mode right now, and it's very creepy. It's very, uh, like you said, when you turn a page, it's like, what? That just happened? Um, it's not it's not very familiar in star Wars. So I, I thought that was a pretty cool take, you know? Oh, absolutely. It's not, it's not a bad, like, wait, what? It's just, it's so different and it's mm-hmm. so outside of the box. It, it's really cool. I almost kind of wish we explored that a little more. With what really? happened. Like, I, I wonder if that'll ever pop up again, because that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I am actually very surprised we haven't. I mean, I remember there was a episode of the Clone Wars, if you remember, where they had those worms, I think, that were kind of infecting. Yes. Kind of caused those geonosins to be zombies and all that stuff. So I, I'm, I'm actually surprised there's not a lot more of that in Star Wars, like a lot of the zombies or infected and, and stuff like that you know um i mean maybe they they've they've had that before in the in the past and they don't deal with that stuff anymore but um and i never read it but do you, do you remember i've seen the cover there was used to be an old book in legends now that had it was about zombie stormtroopers i think you know yeah, I, I never I got there but <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> That would be really funny. It would be really funny, right? It'd be hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what what else? I don't know. What else can we say about this this storyline before we kind of close this up? Because this might be a shorter episode. Like, there really isn't much we can talk about without spoiling huge things. Um. Well, let's talk about the. Let's, we can talk a little bit about the, the the antagonist. I think in this in this book. Yeah, I think we can. We can. So there's a so there's a queen. There's basically a queen that they're they're fighting. I mean, the overall story is setting up that Afra has an artifact that apparently can help to help Luke train. But the only way to get it opened is by this queen that is at this citadel on this planet. That's kind of the setup of this thing. And the, the queen, obviously, is what you come to find out is very uh, strange. She, she, very bizarre. Very unique. Yes. So is that is there anything? I don't know if there's any more beyond that, really. Uh I mean, I just think she is such a bizarre character, but I also really love her because uh-huh. she is so bizarre. Yeah. And the way she gets what she wants is she's also very cunning. And I think that just that makes you go, oh, snap, what's going to happen? Oh, shoot, Luke, you didn't catch that. Are you going to be okay? How are you going to end up defeating her in the end? Yes. If you even do so, if you if you just escape. But I think I think that whole experience too though with it we also see Luke almost train himself. And that's all I'll say. Mhm. Mm-hmm. But we definitely see him grow in this. And I think I think a little light bulb go, goes off in his head. 
And I think yeah. he realizes, you know, maybe in searching for a master, I'm obsessing over it and I can't do that. Very Luke, good point. Remember, Very good point. Luke is still a kid. Mm -hmm. Luke's still a kid. Like he, he hasn't matured yet. So he's searching for essentially a father figure. That's what Obi-Wan was to him when he was his master. Yeah. Cause he, like, so I think he's just trying to search for the next per, uh, parental figure. He's looking for his next master, but he needs to realize, you know, you can't rely on someone else training you. Sometimes you got to do the work yourself. Yeah. I think I that's like what that. he realizes at the end of this. Mm -hmm. Don't know hundred percent. Cause you know, we, we still have more story to, to attack, but I think this is the first domino in that train of thought. Um, and that's all I can really say because otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> it's you give it too much away. Yeah. No, that's really good. That's really good. I like that a lot. That's uh, because I think this, yeah. I mean, you know, Han, Leia, Sana, they show up, but they're very supportive in this, in this story. They're not, there's nothing really advancing their, um, their characters or storylines in this. This is very much Luke's. Yeah. Luke's story and, and, and Afra's story a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's funny because they, you know, there was a point in the book where he identifies Afra as a friend. And, you know, I thought that was really cool because, you know, of course Han and Leia, like, what are you talking about? She, kidnapped you before she is manipulating trying to manipulate you now and whatnot so you know this this is a turning point like you said i think in both their characters in the comic stories right now and i think that's i think that is the intent of this this crossover with with these two characters so um it's pretty cool i mean i think it's an you know it's inevitable that afra has got to make that jump to live action at some point too i think she's becoming a very strong character and we'll get into her comic series too because that that's very successful out there too so um yeah that's a good good point good point anna um you know so overall impact on this era of star wars right now i mean does this storyline do anything to you know the saga storylines that we're used to well i think if this is a turning point for Luke, because it, it's not it's not clearly stated that this is a turning point for him and a lesson that he's learned. But it potentially could be. So if it is a lesson that he has learned and if he realizes, OK, well, I kind of have to figure this out on my own while searching, I can't rely on someone else to teach me. Then I think that's that's very important. That's a very prominent point in his growth. Yeah. But if that's not the case, then it's not really that impactful to the Skywalker saga, but it's definitely something you got to read because I mean, wowza. Like, read it for fun. <laughs> if for anything, read it for fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think you're right. I think it's more um, a different story to enjoy. Um, not not a lot to impact the characters too much, I think, because like I said, I think you could probably not read this and not really miss anything, you know, but um, it is fun to see a different, you know, system and planet and different characters like the queen and stuff like that. So, um, but we, we could, as we get into, because here's the thing, it's like, uh, you know, I haven't, you know, I've read this story before, before we got into doing the show, but I haven't finished this Star Wars comic series yet. So we're about to get into eras where I haven't read yet. So, you know, we do know that eventually he does obviously get Yoda, but, um, you know, he obviously, well, here, here's a, here's a quick point that I, he is tested in this book to use the force yes and we know come episode five when he's hanging in the wampa's lair like he learns how to use the force right so at some point 
from now at this book to the Empire Strikes Back. I mean, he learned something. I think he learns control, though, because when he uses the force, it's more out of instinct. Very true. Yep. Yeah. So I think he learns control. Mm -hmm. But who is he, who is he learning it from, or what is he learning it from? Yeah, that that's the ultimate question. Is it from himself? Does he run into somebody else? Is it through one of the um, holocrons? Yes, holocrons. You know, mm -hmm. very much so. Chris? Do we see Chris in a future? <laughs> Yeah, that would I, be pretty awesome. I, I don't know, but no, you're right. They're like obviously he learns something. Obviously he has grown. Mm -hmm. The question is, how did he get from point A to point B? And at this moment, we don't have a clear answer. We don't. But we will be diving into that as we get deeper into these Star Wars comics. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we um we are, uh, yeah, I was about to look up what the next one was. It's uh, book, see, book six is Yoda's Secret War, but we are going to, um, we're going to be skipping over that because uh, that one has a lot to do with Ben's, uh, Ben Kenobi's journal, which we will be diving into. Mm -hmm. Um um, on its own, there's a, a comic uh, graphic novel just on that. Uh, so book eight is out. Um, oh, so 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 Scream and Citadel. Let's consider book seven, I guess. Book eight is called Out Among the Stars. So there will be, uh, I don't think, see thirty issues, thirty three through thirty seven. Yeah. So I don't know if I've gotten that far yet. So this might be. Ooh. Yeah, this, now I'm starting to get into new territory that I haven't read, uh, read in a while, so uh, or at all. So we will. I'm looking forward to getting into that. So because again, all this this whole series is leading up to episode five. So the the, the gap is completely filled between these the, between those movies with these comics. So yeah, um, yeah, interesting. All right, uh, we're uh, well. We did. We, I guess we just need to rate it, right? What, what, how would you rate this thing? I mean, I'm half tempted to give it a 4, 4.5 just because of creativity alone. <laughs> yeah. And for once, reading one of these books and going, I have no idea what's going to happen next. <laughs> so you're at four, four and a half or four? Four, four and a half somewhere. 4.25. Five. Let's there you go. Yeah. Four and a quarter. Uh <laughs> I'll do four. I'll do four. I think, I think it was above average, you know, mm -hmm. not the best, but above average. Yes, definitely. Cool. Cool. Different. Cool and different. Yeah. yeah. So go check out screaming Citadel. Do it. Do it's it. fun. Yes. It's do it. Uh, continue that star Wars reading. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Um, and of course, Thank you for everybody for coming to our YouTube and our podcast. Uh, keep, uh, keep clicking subscribe. And we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, love getting the comments on YouTube. And uh, of course, hit us up on our weekly show, Inside the Force, and our other shows um, on our podcast and uh, YouTube streams. Thank you, Hannah, as always, for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure was mine. Absolutely. We'll be back for more Star Wars stories and you're probably going to see Hannah popping in on Inside the Force if she'll do it because we got, you know, I got other guys that are out tending to babies, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> Hannah doesn't have any babies and my babies are older now. So I don't, you know, I got a fur baby, I got yeah, a fur, fur baby. Yeah, but not the same. yeah, you, you could walk away from that fur baby for a while. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Go to InsideTheForce.com. And, of course, our YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash InsideTheForce. Take care. Send us your comments. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.